Now we are going to have our first panel discussion and um, I will present uh, each of the participants shortly. I will read what it uh, says in the program because the, the people watching us over streaming uh, do not have the program so that everybody knows who is going to, to be here. Um, you already listened to Jose Manuel Izquierdo. <laughs> and uh, well, he's... Um, studied musicology in Chile and graduated um, with a PhD in music from the University of Cambridge as a Gates Com Cambridge scholar. His work has been mostly on Chilean and Andean composers from the 19th and 20th centuries and is currently working on transnational opera in the region. For his research, which has been on published in various journals and in the form of three books. He has received several awards, including the Otto Mayer Serra Prize, the Ruspoli Prize, and also the Tesi Rossiniani Prize for his PhD dissertation. He currently works at the Universidad Católica de Chile in Santiago. Please, you can sit whatever you want. Thank you. <laughs> Pablo Palacios, he's um, an academic at the University of Valparaíso de Ch Chile. His uh, academic life transits between the convert, uh, the concert guitar and uh, musicology. As a performer, he has played contemporary Chilean pieces at festivals in New York, Bogotá, Buenos Aires, Nice, Barcelona and Morelia. He recently premiered and recorded the first Chilean double concerto for classical and electric guitar in Valparaíso. As a musicologist, his work focuses on avant-garde academic music of the 20th century. His doctoral thesis is dedicated to the Chilean composer Gustavo Becerra Schmidt. He has a degree in history of music, in concert guitar, and a master in Latin American musicology. He is currently a PhD candidate in musicology at the University of Oviedo, Spain. Pablo. Please. And um, representing the creator's perspective, um, Carlos Zamora was born in Calama, Chile. He studied music, music pedagogy, pedagogy at the Universidad de Concepción and composition at the Universidad de Chile. Since 1987, he has composed more than 70 pieces. Most of them have been premiered and many are frequently programmed by orchestras and chamber ensembles, both in Chile and abroad. Most of his works include musical elements from the Licanantai culture of northern Chile and other pre-Columbian cultures. He is currently based in the city of York, in the United Kingdom, where he is a PhD candidate in composition by composer Thomas Simaco. Carlos. Thank you, thank you. Yes. And Eileen Carmi. Um, representing maybe the women in musicology today, um, in musicology. She's uh, pursuing her PhD in music at the University of Glasgow on musicians working lives in early 20th century Valparaíso. She has a MA, a Master of Arts in Musicology from the Universidad de Chile and a Bachelor of Arts in Sociol Sociology from Universidad Alberto Hurtado. She has researched and published on popular music in Chile and its politics, especially cumbia, tango, and nueva canción. She is currently researching on musicians' organizations in Valparaíso, creating the online archive Memoria Musical Valpo. Welcome, Eileen. <laughs> yeah. it's the I have to sit somewhere else. <laughs> it's okay? Or we can bring another a chair? It's okay, good. You can see us, uh, I think. So, here's the microphone. I Well, in the um, presentation of Jose Manuel, um, he uh, alluded to you, Eileen. Maybe I, I would like to, to begin with you. Um, because, <laughs> and uh, also the INSA, the Asso National Association of Composers, came to the discussion, and there is also an, an institution, uh, 
uh, a way, uh, 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 an, uh, some way how the musicians in Chile have tried to make a group that could take them farther than working alone. Um, mainly, I would like to listen from your perspective, um, related to the topic, the main topic, being a composer in Chile. Uh, how do you think that this uh, institutionalization or these this, uh, attempts to institutionalize or to organize different composers um, have uh, been uh, valuable, ha have made some improvement in, in our community? Um, well, uh, for starting, I'd like to say that I'm not at all an expert in specifically in music composition, but um, in my current research, I'm researching on musicians in a broader term, in a broader sense, considering them as composers, performers, conductors, arrangers, etc. The full, uh, the the whole broad of, of activities that musicians can undertake, especially because. Uh, it's very difficult to think in a musician doing only just one activity. Even if it's a composer, sometimes has to conduct, or has to play, has to perform, or has to teach. So has to organize as well. As so <laughs> we, we composers have always have to organize our own concerts on... <laughs> yes, I'm doing this kind of... Uh, yes, prom promotion, self-promotion, etc. So it's, I think it's more complex than saying just uh, one only word for. Obviously, it's a way to simplify and to, in a way, to understand more, I mean, um, more kind of categorizations. But it's, I think, we if we are in a conference of music composition, we think we need to think in music composition as a, in a broader sense, like, so I'm, t I'm saying this in relation with your question, um, because this association that, that Jose Manuel talked about earlier and you are asking me about now, yes, in a way it's an association of composers that, but they also define who is the composer and this, that is also that is not an that's n that is not exclusively of that organization. It's something that all organizations do, because they need to define why are we organizing, it, why why what uh, what do we need, what is who the, the purpose and, of and the what unites us. Mm -hmm. So we are researchers, we are conductors, we are musicians, we are performers or we are all of this and we can accept and allow any kind of musicians in our organization or we just can allow uh, just performers or we, ju we only can allow singers or composers. And then the question that arises, the question that this conference has, what mm. is a composer mm. or who is a composer? Uh, how can we define who the composer is if it's a... Uh, composer related or linked with a university in an academic sense, or it's a composer like Violeta Barra how, or like Vicente Bianchi. So I think it's more complex now in a way, and that com those complexities um, make some tensions in bet among musicians and among the their, or their own organizations. Yeah. Um we saw in the film also the actual uh, director of the um, National Association for Composers, uh, the, um, uh, Antonio Carvalho. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't talking about the association especially, but now we have at your lift, um, Carlos was uh, the director for a few years. Uh, how many years was that? <laughs> Three years. Uh, microphone? <laughs> Three, four years. <coughs> um, mm, how do you think does this association really influence the way the composition community or composition scene in Chile develops? 
Is I'm it important? Not sure, yeah, I'm not sure if the, this composition, whether this composition led the musical mind, the musical thought in, in musical terms. <coughs> it was created in 1936 against another association. That was the, 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 the story. That is the story. And eventually uh, became a really special association. Uh, many times almost this association disappeared because composers take another ways to, to develop their careers or whatever. The thing is, this association in, this, in the better times uh, call all composers to get together, to be together for some, any object. Uh, the, the, uh, on the times where, uh, I, I don't remember the name, uh, Carrasco, mm -hmm. El Guaso Carrasco, was, was German. The, he produced almost 10 CDs, mm -hmm. and that was the object, that was the purpose to promote the, comp the, the music of the, 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 the composers who are members of this association. When I was chairman, uh, unfortunately, the association faced a, a crisis because the, another association, which is not uh, for exclusively for composers, which is the Copyright Association, the SSA in Chile, took the kind of place of a <coughs> how do you say, uh, to, to fight for rights more than the copyrights, a, a kind of a syndicate or something. Uh, so they uh, started to, to influence the policies. They designed the law, the, the law nowadays. Uh, Sebastian Arasuris was talking about it. And the thing is, this association from time to time uh, tried to help people to follow one objective and be together again for something. But I am not sure if this uh, association uh, influenced the musical life uh, at all. And do you think it represents composers in Chile? Unfortunately, no. Because I, I can tell you, as the now as representing the CIMUC, we mm. have from the beginning tried to, um, to catch all yeah. All musicians available, all who wants to participate, and we have always tried to um, disseminate the information to get to everyone. Uh, if we get to somebody, we tell them, please tell your your colleagues. Uh, but as a composer, for example, I've never been contacted by the Association for Composers. So then, and you, as you said, sometimes it was really disappeared. Yeah. And then times. it came back, and th then I noticed, oh, they are going to make two concerts this yeah. this year. Yeah. Uh, but it's really not, uh, as it seems to me that it doesn't represent them. No? You know, this uh, every group of people depends on the, the memberships. I mean, the, how the people want to work uh, in favor of this association. You are gathering, the, the CIMUC is gathering people from all over the world with one objective. You, you already talked about it. This national... Uh, Association of Composers in Chile. Nowadays, have, he has two or three main objectives. Uh, make some concerts during the, 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 the year, maybe every year. They apply to this uh, Fondart fund. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, fund. they didn't get it uh, uh, these last years. But when we did, we, we produced several, several uh, CDs. So it is depend what happened if you have money or not if you have something to offer to the to the members if you don't people don't want to participate I was uh, in the this um, uh, event called Classical Next in Rotterdam uh, with a delegation from Chile uh, and there was the um, the councillor for the um, national council there was Alio Chasonovera yes. a composer and was in the film <coughs> also and uh, we were talking uh, very vividly about um, if our organization, the CIMUC, <laughs> should be called International Society for Chilean Music. And he was saying that um, it, it shouldn't be so easy for a private institution to have the name Chilean. Because 
we, of course, do not have the representation of whole, the whole country. We are not the government. I mean, and even the government has uh, now 30% or so. No? Uh, but the same thing could be said. Uh, I, I mean, I do not agree with him. No? I think we can call it like this. Uh, but the National Association uh, of, of Composers doesn't have the word Chile, but it has the national word. <laughs> and it's also not governmental. It's also n it doesn't have this politic to be um, to gather everyone who wants to. Maybe I it's possible, but you have to contact them, and you don't know exactly. Who, uh, the website is not very transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and then plötzlich, uh, no, that's German. Suddenly, you um, notice that there, there are concerts, but you never know how these these concerts come to be. Well, I I, I don't know how if I have to tell you something because I, I am not participating. I mean, I am a member, but I'm a, I've been in, in Europe two years, and before of that, I didn't participate so close to, to, the, to the organization. The thing is, I, uh, by the way, la, the, the name, the exact name is Asociación Nacional de Compositores iPhone Chile. From Chile. Yeah. So, uh, I even more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am not sure. I, I think the, 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 the role of uh, protect uh, the musicians and composers in particular uh, rights nowadays is the uh, right copyright society mm. more than another uh, associations and that's it I, 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 the, the 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 reason is that in the the SSD are more more composers than the ANC of course, yeah, because there is a but the interest. thing is, one uh, this SSD is for copyright. It's not representing composers. No. But the thing is, in, in in the daily life, it is. Yeah, uh, we, we will go into yeah. into the SSD. But I want to uh, ask you a, a last short question: How do, did you come to be a member of the National Association of Composers? In, in when I did, <coughs> uh, was the president of the uh, Copyright Society, Luis Advis. And was the president of the uh, S uh, uh, INSC, uh, uh, Fernando Carrasco. Mm -hmm. And they were really close friends. Fernando Carrasco was a member of the Quilapayun group. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing is, I was a young composer. Uh, Fernando invited me to participate in the INSC. And automatically, when you uh, get m got member of the INSC, you uh, enter as a member of the Copyright Society on that time. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. And that's why. <laughs> Jose Manuel wanted to add something. I, I wanted to, to comment on, because I think there, from the question, there is an interesting association from what you both have said, which is, or what, what you mentioned, Marlene, which is the idea that from, for musicians to make an association, it, it implies that you need to define what what a, a musician is, or what what a composer is, what, a, and I think there is an interesting discussion in that in the in that the association of composers comes from the 1930s, which is when the debate is about naming people composer, making a dif difference, saying this is a composer and not something else. And on the other hand, I think maybe now that the copyright society has so much power. It implies that the musician is being, in a way, maybe um, defined by someone that um, takes money from copyright or like is related to copyright in a way, or that, or that copyright is very important to define what what a musician is or how he, he behaves in in a market at the end. You know, you know? So I just wanted to add that maybe to the discussion, saying that maybe it is related. I don't know if you want to. Yes, and also relate. It's not also related to the market, but also related to the laws, because uh, coincidentally, in a way, <laughs> this uh, separation of the Association of Composers was after the, the change of the law of copyright by the late 1920s. So it, it w that, that law created a huge debate also. In and th th that was the first law on copyright in Chile. Could you give us a, a little summary about what was the difference or wh what 
of what is now. Of what is now, yeah. Well, uh, it's a just lot the, the main things that changed. Yeah, it was a law that was uh, created in 1925 in the new constitution. Um, but that law, um, on that time, uh, just um, didn't it didn't include the um, performance rights. Okay, just so the, the, the creation, yeah. the intellectual creation. That it was uh, for for every intellectual creation, not just for music, for architectural, for everything. Mm -hmm. So for poems, writing, everything. Uh, so it didn't include the rep reproduction rights, just the crea the creation rights. So what happened when someone creates something, but other one, uh, for example, a, a musical work, mm -hmm. or a or a theatrical act, uh, play. Mm -hmm. If you create, you compose a music, but I play it, then mm -hmm. so who who get, who received the copyright? You or me, or both? Mm -hmm. So that was the, the debate at that time, and that also influenced this uh, separation also because it was someone wanted to maintain this law that way, and other ones wanted to change it, and obviously were the performers and the popular musicians who wanted to change it in a stronger way because they they were more uh, affected th with this with this law so it also it's need to be also everything of this i think it's need to be put in context with market with economy with politics and with laws as well yeah just the word about it uh, after the law is from 1925. Yeah. The National Association is from 1936. Yeah. And at that time, it was created a kind of copyright society called yeah. El Pequeño Derecho Autor, yeah. the small copyright, administrated by the University of Chile. Mm -hmm. And just at, at the end of the 80s, was created the copyright society in the way you know nowadays. Private. Right. Because the other exactly, one was... Exactly. Uh, but the thing is, uh, you were talking about this uh, leading uh, in all uh, fields the, by the University of Chile. It is yeah. incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please. Uh, uh, for me, uh, the, the problem is, uh, is that uh, the composer uh, no linking the uh, the words uh, with the uh, uh, copyright. Uh, the the is Santa Cruz ideology uh, no no doesn't say not say not say anything about this. Uh, the composer in Chile uh, only premieres. Uh, only the uh, recorder, uh, but not uh, not uh, have the ideology of the copyright. Uh, no, no have ideology uh, of market. Are um, lobo solitario. It's a wolf. The yeah. composer is a wolf. It's it's a, it's a room species. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I wanted to, s to say something uh, about this also because um, it related to the SSD, the Association for the Copyrights, um, there uh, we can we can say that the composers who really profit from this association are the popular music composers. And my experience as, uh, well, not only popular music composer, just to be wide enough, um, is that the the whole uh, organization, the whole system from them is not built for uh, so-called music of written tradition composers. Um, many times, uh, or for example, they have uh, ridiculous uh, norms like uh, for a piece to be uh, registered, you have to send a recording. But how can a piece then be paid its copyright by the premiere if it has not been recorded? So you you cannot register your pieces before they are premiered. This is really uh, strange. That's why in ta in times of uh, Luis uh, Advis, the the membership was automatically. 
So you you are composer from the National Association of Composer, then you are member of the Copyright Society. Because you think it should be a, be like this again? I think so. I I I I'm not thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> nowadays, but I think so. The thing is, uh, nowadays it's working as you are saying. Mm. Uh, yeah, I have. I am a member, mm. and I have problems to to yeah, register if you are not in because Chile, I have to send by email or exactly, whatever a, a recording. Could be by Finale or Sibelius, even doesn't yeah. matter. But you have to do that. I, I think it's insane. I, that because I think it is built for popular musicians. Yeah. Because there are people watching TV all the time, registering every day, 24 hours a day, what music is sounding. They call the the, hmm. the channel and register uh, this music is from I don't know whatever. But we as a composer, we have to send each time. Uh, a form yeah. telling them that one piece of us was played and then they go for the money. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. No, no, they, they do the job. They do the job really yeah. well, by but the way. Firstly, but the, the piece has to be re registered. Yeah, you, have, you have to register the piece and then you have to tell them that your piece was performed. Yeah. And you receive the copyright. It's, it's, it's nothing. Yeah. I receive three pes Chilean pesos sometimes, <laughs> which is uh, a, a joke. Yes, but the, the 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 business for composers is the rental and the sale of the. Tomorrow I'm going to <laughs> talk about. It. Great, um, Paulo, you are also a performer. Yeah. Uh, you have we uh, read in your um, s short biography that you have uh, done these uh, concertos and uh, a lot of m Chilean music. No? Um, what could you? Tell us from this perspective, from the performer perspective, uh, related to what Eileen was saying also, that um, it's not the same um, to write a piece and let it there and register it maybe if it was possible, just as the score and then uh, the times when it is played. And uh, as a performer also, how has your experience been uh, related to copyright or to, to the composers in general? Uh, from, com from performers, uh, the the Chilean music is are uh, very complex in in a lot of moment. Uh, why? Uh, in first place, uh, the scores the scores um, are no edit. Not edited. Yeah. Not edit. So you have the manuscripts. The so manuscript <laughs> only the manuscript. Uh, only a manuscript uh, with the um, the composer. Uh, the job is is with the composer. Yeah. Uh, uh, so working together with the composer. Wor working together. Uh, yesterday, talk about this with uh, Carlos. Mm -hmm. um, the performers are uh, many times uh, uh, are a lot uh, a lost. Uh, with the Chilean uh, music, uh, why the scores are mal uh, wrong, 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 wrong writings, yeah. wrong writings. They're uh, not corrected, not edited. Yeah. No, not corrected. Uh, uh, the performers uh, um, uh, evit, uh, evitan, uh, avoid, avoid uh, the the Chilean music. It's, it's a great problem. Uh, so so would, you, would you say that uh, to have an industry that better helped uh, composers to have their pieces edited would help for uh, Chilean uh, performers or from somewhere else to get them to play them? Uh? It's, it's very necessary, yeah. this uh, edit music. So this is, is uh, interesting because nowadays... Um but not, 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 not some <laughs> a, a market. It's only for uh, for for play, yeah, but uh, no 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 in the There's no money. There's no money. Yeah, There's no money, no. Um, yeah nowadays a lot of composers uh, work directly with the computer or, or transcribe, and then you can have a edited version. But there's not, uh, of course, always uh, uh, somebody who is the copist uh, who is. Correcting and editing is uh, like in bo uh, books, and so it's very needed. I, I know. Um, yeah. Um, the, like the, 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 the final. Um, 
the works place one time. Yeah. So it's a great problem. Um, uh, the pieces are only played once. Only play one times one record. Yeah. All is one. Yeah. It's the one time. It's, uh, the premiere is uh, is uh, part of the ideology. Uh, I call it uh, uh, this uh, uh, shadow of uh, Domingo Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Today, the shadow of Domingo Santa Cruz are 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 strong. Sigue siendo fuerte. Still strong. Yeah. And what would you say, uh, what, what advice would you give us if you had the chance to change something in the way it works um, so that this uh, did not continue to happen? That uh, pieces, uh, that, that performers add these pieces to their repertoire that they play uh, frequently? It's difficult. Uh, performer uh, the same piece uh, many times why uh, the the concert the producer the the the, the cultural system uh, expect Specs. the from performers the only classical music okay. Chilean music Chilean contemporary music is not classical music What is it? It's not classical music. The the public uh, expect the, the classical music. Yeah. Uh, the From the classic period, you mean? Mm. Classic period, or romantic period, yeah. uh, modern period, but but not Actually, Chilean yeah. music. Chilean music is uh, outsider. It's a. Uh, it's almost uh, like exotic. alternative. Mm. Exotic. The Chilean contemporary music is exotic in the program of the performer. Is the obligate in the in the in the contest uh, obligate in the festival, but it's no choice for the performance. Uh, the performance dislike this. Mm -hmm. Is is the real? Yeah. <laughs> I let me take the point. Uh, I'm not sure if the bad written scores the problem. What I think. In terms of uh, uh, edition, I think the problem is we have bad written scores because they are bad composed. Let me let me <laughs> follow this idea. Don't worry. Uh, according to my point of view, unfortunately, nowadays you can study composition in three or four years. When I studied, you have to, th that time you had to study four years before get the first year at the university and then study five years to get the degree. Nowadays, uh, in in UK, for example, even in Chile, you can study, Aliocha Solovera said, mm -hmm. yeah. you have people who want to be a composer without musical knowledge, without musical background. And after four years, they are, they, are, they are composers. And I think they don't learn, people don't learn enough. And that's why they get f free their minds and compose everything. They think people can play because machines, computers can. Can everything, yeah. And when they go to the performers, the performers are human and they can't. I think that is, that is a really big problem but this brings us uh, directly back to the presentation from jose manuel yeah. yeah because that would mean that uh, at least in the technical part uh, this kind of music is is related to the academia uh, unavoidable <coughs> exactly <laughs> it's that is unavoidable um would you like to add something about for this or Yeah, I do think that, that that's the problem. Like, like from even from the beginning of the discussion about this idea of of what what we think music composition it, uh, is the <laughs> idea of talking about a written tradition of music or art music or any of these concepts imply usually that there is this sort of very 
historic long time connection of historical but really the phenomenon of the composer working we sort of uh, started from the university and so on which started here in you know Vienna in the very late 19th century and usually teaching harmony or something like that not teaching composition in university but really mi became mainstream in the mid 20th century so it is a, it's a very very new thing and I think we tend to think of it as a sort of very long time thing. We don't we don't tend to remember that, you know, nineteenth century composers, most early twentieth century composers had to also write other things, work on other things to support themselves. So I think more the question is, okay, after sixty, seventy years, sixty years of the model of the composer being supported to write something and not caring about sort of yeah, copyright money and that, that sort of thing of making money from somewhere. Um, the question is, if that model, because the u sort of state university model of the 20th century is sort of falling, so if that is falling, w in which way, that's so what is going to happen mm -hmm. to that, that musical scene, which was from the l second half of the 20th century really strong, is it going to change? Is it going to, which is the question you asked, wh where is it going to happen? So I think a lot is about thinking that the word we use for composer, for art music and everything, I think is very much related to the second half of the 20th century. Or a big part of maybe the last 80 years of the 20th century. <coughs> and we cannot really think of it as a sort of, this sort of very long tradition that, I don't know, Mendelssohn work in that way, which it didn't, uh, or Brahms or whomever. Um, it didn't work like that. So, so I think if we think that, we also think about you know, what you were saying about the, the idea that the, the performer is still being uh, taught in the university to in Chile and in many other places to think of, okay, I need to, well in Chile it's very specific, this idea of I need to play national music as a separate category, as you say, you know, it's they have, you know, you play 17th century music, 18th century, 20th century music, and Chilean music as something, as a, you know, the separate category in a different album. So uh, yeah, so if, and it's usually is occupies the same role in concerts that the overture uses, you know, for new music or national music or, or you know, a short piece that you know you can get after that if, if you are late. Before yeah, so ten minutes or something. So, so what, what, how do you approach that? Which is again a very sort of a phenomenon of the 20th century, and I think I think the so one I think a lot of the problem is to imply that that has to sort of survive in a way that we should do something for it to be kept alive. But I, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the only answer to the thing. And, and if that is not the answer, then we think, okay, so what is the role of the performer for now? So what, what can change about that? And I think, I think a lot of these things are, can be seen. You know, the, the same approach of playing just one piece because it is Chilean is very much related to the idea of heritage. And then, if new music becomes heritage, then what happens? Then, then there is something happening there. <coughs> it is becoming, in many ways, heritage, I think. So is that the way, like, keep this, the new music scene as something, you know, okay, that happens, so we have to keep it, like, you know, the New Year concert here, you know, you have to keep it going because it's sort of tradition. Is, it, is that the solution, really? Like, would, would that be the really good option? Um, I think that that, so that, that's what I wanted to add in relation to also my favorite thing. Yes, about, about that, I think the contemporary music, not Chilean music, contemporary music, should be included everywhere between Beethoven, Mozart, and Brahms, and not as a special piece, just as part of the concert, naturally. But I, I, I want to to finish my point uh, related to uh, performers i'm not i i don't know in in europe but in chile i am pretty sure performers are not are not trained in contemporary techniques and extended techniques it's just the same it's the same kind of this is special two hours and let's play some bartok together or something and that's it and after that they have to face these contemporary pieces without train it, being trained. Yeah. And I think it is, you are brave people. Exactly, eh? because yeah. they are prepared for more than 10 years to play one kind of music. Exactly. So if they take these pieces, they play it like almost perfectly. Almost and perfectly. then you are 
confronted with something yeah. that you cannot exactly. get to the same level, and of course it is frustrating. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. But they, I, I, I think, let me finish my, my part. I think performers are the best people in the world for <laughs> composers. Of course. Because they play our music. They gave life to our music. They study. They dedicated hours. They to decipher our graphics and our figures, our notes, etc. And then they played it. Mm. I, I think it is the best. Part they are responsible somehow. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Uh, m much times, many times for free. Yes. And yeah, I I, I always like performers. They, they are amazing people. <laughs> I have a last question before we uh, open the round uh, to everyone. Um, I a few words before, I, I would like to, um, to make the point that uh, in Chile, <coughs> at least in the time w when I was there, but I, what I've heard is that it's continued to be like this, is that uh, the contemporary music scene has a um, considerable public, uh, an audience, uh, and it is uh, very young. So I remember from uh, my times there in concerts in the Salon Fresno of the Catolica University, um, it, it was a, a huge hall and it was full and people were sitting on the uh, on the on the floor. Uh, somebody was drinking beer. So it was a very different uh, atmosphere than what you see in Europe. Uh, I think that has uh, um, I, to do with uh, something soci sociological in Chile. So in this sense, um, I wanted to ask, uh, who wants to answer, um, if do you think that um, this question, what does it mean to be a composer, uh, is it different in some way in Chile? Is there is something in our society that makes it a little special in some way? Uh, what does it mean, being a composer? Let me start. I think the times you are talking about, it was a special time in Chile. The contemporary music festival from the University of Chile doesn't exist on the times, you remember. And for, for some reason, everybody became friends, composers and performers, and all of them pushed together. And I remember the times, 800 people yes. listen, listening, contem listening to contemporary music. But quiet. It was some kind it of protest to incredible. the mainstream. Huh? Could be. Huh? Uh, yeah, we didn't study about it, <laughs> research about it. But something happened. Then they uh, started the, the, the festival of the University of Chile. I created one in my the university I was working. Mm -hmm. uh, then the, in Valparaiso, another. In Concepcion, another. And something happened. And yes. the, the audience fell down. Fell down deeply, dramatically. Nowadays it you go to this concert again. The, exactly. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. they, they, they nowadays came back to the small uh, halls to perform contemporary yes. music because they, they, this big place is too much for 30 or 50 people. Something happened. Musicologists should, should research about it. I think that <coughs> in, uh, I don't know if in specifically in contemporary music but I think that in a way every year there is an, a new festival or concert or uh, or event that gather a lot of people uh, young people and and also i think it also has to do with the with the um, concursable funds that allows to anybody to apply for a festival or for a for an event for example the i don't know the for the late three last three years or maybe more there is this festival of electronic music yes. that with the where we specialized in the theremin and every year they it's growing and growing and it's a very specific thing about just one instrument and every year it's growing and i think Last year they or this year they they brought this this terminist uh, I don't remember the name Caroline Aik. So from so it's like a things uh, like like new kind of movements if you want or new kind of trends that are growing. But also because I think because the public also wants 
uh, interesting things to go, interesting events, concerts, or things to, to, to learn, to listen, to enjoy. And also, if they are free or with cheap tickets, it's better for young, young audiences. That's uh, another great topic. Uh, yes. Uh, but uh, but also, also, it's not uh, ex uh, it's not always like like that. But I think it it also has a lot of a lot to do with this insti cultural institution, yeah. uh, national <laughs> institution of culture that it's uh, promoting uh, new events every time. Like not promoting the events itself, but uh, offering money to someone that wants to <laughs> yeah, promote. Yeah, in, in a sense, the, the government is then, uh, through these people who have these ideas of new festivals, uh, is supporting the creation maybe, for example, for music for Teremin in Chile. Yeah. I don't know if that no, has yeah. happened, but yeah. uh, electronic music, for example, there are a lot of festivals now, yeah. and uh, I know that because of that, there are many people mm -hmm. that are writing more pieces because they, yeah. they know they are going to be shown. Yeah, and also another thing that it's connected is the the promotion of the music. If nobody knows about contemporary music, or if nobody have heard never a sole piece of contemporary Chilean music, uh, why it should go to a concert? You know, if you don't know about it, if you never have heard about it, if what what's that? You know, like if the information get to the 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 majority of the population, or it's just and a little circle around the university, around music students, around composers, or, or it's, do, do you hear sometimes in the radio, or you know, so that kind of things are also interesting, and I think there were also uh, in, uh, some attempts to do that, to promote uh, Chilean composition, during the 40s and the 50s with under the the popular front when with the creation of the dirección de información y comunicaciones mm -hmm. i don't know how to translate yeah. it information but and <laughs> communications <Yeah>. uh, organization <laughs> they, they try with, they try they, they recorded some al some albums of chilean compositions mm -hmm. for example music from of sapiola music from you know, like this is our music that it hasn't been recorded, or it's recorded, but it's not uh, it hasn't been spread across the country. So let's let's copy these albums and and give it from free or very cheap prices and put it on the radios, broadcast it on the radios. But it finally didn't work. But it wasn't necessarily by because of music, and not because of the the. The project itself, but for uh, another for other reasons. So I don't know. The the public <laughs> is a great term. Uh, Gustavo Becerra says in the 17s and 18s, uh, the concert hall is dead. Says mm -hmm. Gustavo Becerra. New music needs new new spaces. It sounds like Nietzsche. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but today is, uh, is, uh, is real. This uh, Our culture is a uh, visual culture. Uh, new music uh, needs uh, reappropriate, appropriate, reappropriate the, the, the urban space. Uh, is the, for me, mm -hmm. the only way uh, for a new deal with the Chilean public, mm -hmm. uh, insist the shadow of Santa Cruz <laughs> <laughs> is very strong today. Uh, Becerra uh, uh, says uh, that the festival, uh, the culture of the composition, uh, including the festival, uh, are dead in the 70s. In the 18, uh, uh, in, in Chilean Music Review, Sarah uh, write about this in interview uh, with uh, Gustavo Greenhill, Gonzalez Greenhill, uh, and say that again. Uh, 
is uh, very categoric about uh, the uh, Chilean music scene. Yes, I think that that's, yeah, that's a very good point. Because I also think that in relation to the, it's been previously said, that um, in many ways there is still a lot we ha need to learn about the sort of the way new music behave in Latin America specifically. Because while in the, in the, in sort of in the Northern Hemisphere, Cold War, uh, experimentalism, the idea of new music, and all of that was, you know, very much supported by the uh, USA government, and it was it was financed, and there was festivals, and all of that it was really very much as uh, like this sort of Western approach to music composition in opposition to the Soviet one. And the opposite side in Latin America, sort of vanguardism and experimentalism were very much a left-wing project which had lots of fights about that because how can it be left wing when at the same time it is sort of the very you know capitalist american system of the 50s and 60s so it was a huge debate which also happened in europe obviously you know the yeti or no no uh, they also had that political debate and saying if this very the idea of the composer as an individual you know which is a very sort of 20th century capitalist view in a way it's the same it's it has a confrontation with you know fernando garcia writing music like that um and at the end, I think what happened is with the dictatorship in the 70s and 80s, something happened that um, the, 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 the new music uh, just as, as a waste, it stopped this its historical process of reception of what, what was happening in Europe. And it sort of, it, it was like transposed to the 90s. So I think that sort of big movement of appreciation for new music in, in the late 90s, or in the 90s in general, and the, uh, that huge audience and everything was because it was new in a way that was in the s late 60s, early 70s in Europe. But in Chile it couldn't happen because of the dictatorship <coughs> and, and, and right-wing governments in Latin America being ber pretty much against that sort of music and that sort of vanguardism. So I think that belatedness of Latin America which happens in this political context is important. Like we cannot just compare to Europe. And, and in, in relation to what happened with audiences, I think the other big change has been marketing. I think the marketing of the 90s of new music and even in the 80s, the f very first movements were very much like promoting a marketing of something that was new, exciting. Yeah, I know there was a lot of that. And you know, and it, it, it even the posters, when you look in the archives, they look very different from other classical music posters. Uh, but in the last 10 years that has changed. And a lot of the similar. new music posters and promotion and marketing today is exactly the same as classical music in general sort of very official, very formal, very tuxedo-like. Uh, back to the mainstream. And it, 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 it became, uh, in a way, it, it more than mainstream, which I don't think is it's wrong, it, it, if it had become mainstream, there would be lots of audiences, because yeah. that's mainstream. It's not mainstream, it's making it formal, in, a s in the sense of without distinction in shape not from other classical new, music scenes. Not that new anymore. No, it's the same with early music, I think. It has also become this sort of tuxedo classical music <laughs> picture of the, you know, the performer, the composer looking like this, and, you know, and the, the very sort of formal approach to design. Mm. And you can see that also in the recordings. It has also yes. changed in that way. And it's, 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 there is no way to make a difference between classical music scene in marketing terms from new music scenes and early music scene, as it was possible in the late 90s or early 2000s. Yes. I think nowadays they look really the same from marketing point of view. And I, I, I work in marketing in the, in the Teatro Municipal, and I, I, I know that feeling of, you know, how do you, they are being sold as the same, and then, yeah. So I think that this, as you say, this is a problem, as you brought it to so, uh, the, um, An example. Um, I visited uh, Mexico in Morelia. Uh, exist in Morelia, uh, CENMAS, Centro Mexicano para la Música y las Artes, uh, sonoras. Senmas is the um, institution for the new music, contemporary music, um, avant-garde, etc. But uh, Senmas uh, uh, organized a festival in the city, in the space of the city, uh, with mapping, with the great speakers, and today, the, 
the people of the Morelia linked the um, identity of the city with the new music. The normal people <laughs> uh, linked the people. <laughs> common people linked the, the, the new music, contemporary music, um, experimental music, electronic music uh, with the identity with their own of, culture. Uh, of the city. It's, it's a great example yes. for, uh, for Latin American music. Uh, Rodrigo Sigal, uh, your uh, director, is the uh, is the ideological uh, father yeah. about the the semmas. The, the last intervention, and then we go to. Uh, we have big difference, Chile, and the example you are giving us. In Mexico, the, uh, the orchestra's program, orchestral program, the young orchestral program, is amazing. It's huge, like the Venezuela's program mm -hmm. as well, <coughs> much bigger than, than ours. The, the, I think the, the problem of the audience is the bass. Uh, it's because we don't learn music in schools. Unfortunately, music teachers in schools uh, uh, they build, their, they fabric uh, enemies of the music. In general, not not all of them, but in general, the the, the system is is wrong. It's bad. It's bad. The teachers are not enough. Uh, many times, not well prepared, and they the people students don't learn music at all which is much different in, in, in Europe. It, p children sing in choir, children play an instruments, and we don't. We just sing some folk or something, and that's it. From the north. Yeah, exactly, from the north, which is better. <laughs> I think we have to work in the, in the, with, with children mm -hmm. at the beginning. 20 years later, maybe we are going to have an audience. OK, uh, thank you very much for this uh, round and now we are going to open for questions from uh, the people present here or through our um, social media may i start just me not social Please. media yeah um, i think <coughs> said a lot of interesting things about performance and performers and i think performers are the bridge between composers and audience and in many cases that bridge is break and I would like to say in this here I, we are three performers who live in Austria actually the three of and for me of a performer a Chilean performer it's not so easy to incorporate uh, a Chilean repertoire and what you say about the scores is very important because how do I get a music for cello the, the only way if it's if I know the composer of if I can get the the score from someone else but it's but here, if I want to try a new music, contemporary music for Helmut Lachenmann or so, I go and I buy the and I buy the score and I try it. But if I want to try a new music, probably I will be afraid to ask hey, Carlos Amora, "Can you give me your music just to try it if I like it or so?" So, if I cannot e get easy and a score just for try the music, it's very hard to have this feeling. Okay, I will try to incorporate music and. There is some performance that have the connection with the with the composers. I know some people. There is string quartet that wor worked like uh, this in Chile uh, Surcos. But if anyone that n doesn't have the connection want to in incorporate uh, Chilean music, there is no way to get contemporary music. All pianists play when you say when you ask about Chilean music, you have the tonadas from Humberto Allende and the Dolores from Leng and that has to do not only because they are good, right, or easy to play, but you can find s uh, in a very easy way the, the, the scores. But also, it's very hard to have a composer that wants to put uh, open or away the, the the music, and that's it's already a bridge that is broken between composers and performance but before going to audience. And how do you think that that could be, especially for the two composers there, or the, the focus composers, that can be better do it because it's really, uh, yeah, it's easier for us to try a lot of performers want to try music, want to try new music, 
contemporary or even not well-known music, but if you don't find the music, if you don't find the way to have a score just to play it alone in your house, it's, it will be very difficult to, to keep this in a, for a concert hall or something like that. You're right. Unfortunately, at the beginning of the 70s, could be, the publishers in Chile uh, didn't publish music anymore. The good news are nowadays, this year, uh, a new company was created in Chile called Editorial Nacional, and they are going to to launch their site on internet. I think this December, maybe in, on January, and the idea is exactly what are you talking about to build this this uh, bridge again, and. Of course, unfortunately, on the on the other side, Chile is just a 70, maybe less than 20 million people. It's not a market for anything musical speaking. But uh, because this social media, the, the <coughs> internet in general, the market is the world. So the, uh, the scores are going to be available. <coughs> uh, and you will get my music. <laughs> Not for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with cheap, cheap uh, yeah, prices. But, yeah, I hear you. But this is the problem that also in Chile, the people is not used to play for, for scores. Yeah, That's that also a problem, yeah. Tomorrow, I, tomorrow I'm going to talk about yeah. a little bit about this. Yeah, exactly. People don't want to pay for anything. Yeah. Even if, if the score is just uh, two or three euros, mm -hmm. uh, they don't pay. It, it is incredible. In rental materials, it is the same thing for orchestras. Orchestras don't want to pay a hundred dollars or something, which is nothing. Uh, w yeah, we we have to change our mind in socially speaking, and because composers don't receive money uh, for anything, we create you wrote maybe that. performers uh, earn something, maybe, but composers not at all, and we have to do something. We have to earn some money using our profession, which is insane. For, for, for going to the festival, we have to pay. For sending music to a composi uh, composition competition, we have to pay. We have to pay. It is the opposite. We have to receive money. You wrote a good column about in Cooperativa, I think, about the living as a composer. Sorry, uh, you s you write, wrote a good column about yeah, living I as did, a composer. I did, and and uh, you talk about two or three yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. remember. It is because we study something that we know we are not going to work on as a professional. Yeah. It is insane. Yeah, I think um, I, I've always said that the composition is, the, at least in Chile, the worst uh, profession you can have if you, if, if you are trying to earn money. Yeah. Um, we have another question, maybe from here. Yes. So on the same subject, um, uh, as a performer, it's, it is such a nightmare if you want to play contemporary music, because no one, no organizer wants to have it. Uh, it's always very expensive. Uh, you ha they have to pay copyrights, and you have to fight. To to put in a program just a five minute piece or a twenty minute piece, they say no, that's impossible. And everyone will leave, whatever. So, um, but the, the main the main issue uh, they always say is the money, the copyrights. They have to get copyrights for Mozart, no copyright, so play Mozart. And of course, uh, this is the only way for the composers to make a living or the only way to protect their music. But where's the balance? How do we make it possible for young performers to be enthusiast enthusiastic about playing new music when everywhere there's difficulty, everywhere everyone's saying, no, don't play this. And uh, at the same time, we don't le let everyone play anything without uh, paying what, what they should pay. Where is the, how, how do we do it? Because today the system, I, I think it's not working. Because uh, we get these places where you play contemporary music, like festivals, or we get performers that only play contemporary music, that are in contact with the composers. But if you want to play first half Beethoven, second half uh, 
something else, contemporary or whatever, even Shostakovich, it, it's cra with Shostakovich it's crazy, it's a nightmare. You have to write to the Soviet Union or something <laughs> to play it. To play it. <laughs> where, where, how do we do it? How do we solve this, this dilemma? Sure. Uh, in the in the Chilean guitar, the composer uh, writes new music, but it's not the same uh, the contemporary music. It's uh, the new guitar in Chile, uh, called La Escuela Chilena de la Guitarra. Uh, uh, right uh, works uh, like cuecas, tonadas, uh, and rhythm, Chilean rhythms, uh, Latin American rhythms. The, the, this uh, uh, is very important. Uh, why? The guitar player uh, uh, plays these this works every day in every concert, but it's tonal music, it's tonal music. Uh, the solution is hard. Uh, it's, it's, una, it's, it's a aesthetic uh, of the past, but it's, uh, it's a, a new aesthetic uh, where you uh, find the jazz, find the uh, folklore, folk music, find the classical music, and the guitarists play this job. <coughs> Contemporary music, <laughs> but this job, th this works uh, are also contemporary music, but not aesthetic. The solution uh, is conservador, ¿cómo se dice? Conservative in the guitar, but is the yeah, is no, I, I understand uh, this could be a, a solution, but I, I think most of the time the problem is not that the people don't want to hear some uh, specific style or some specific um, kind of contemporary music. The problem is uh, no one wants to open a place for it because it's ex expensive. It's much more expensive. So. Uh, because of this, we are still hearing the same sonatas from 1200 years ago, and it's infuriating and it's so boring. But even so, a lot of people want to hear new stuff. It's very difficult to open a new market for it. Uh, that, that's that's my main issue or question: how how to solve this? It's a, it's a money problem, not not an aesthetic problem, I think. Uh. Let, can I add something? It's not, uh, I don't know what the solution is, <laughs> but I think that one of the problems, it's thinking this kind of things isolated. For example, the problems of the performers is the problem of the performers. Mm -hmm. The problem of the composers is the problem of the composers. You know, it's, it's, there is no dialogue between the both, there is no, uh, exchange of ideas, exchange of these are our problems, and maybe it's the same problems of the other ones, so maybe they can find a solution together. And not just the performers and the composers, but also the conductors, the arrangers, the organizers, etc. <laughs> and also, <coughs> and, and maybe in that way, uh, obviously, it's a problem of money because theaters or, or, or orchestras or whatever don't want to pay some for something that they don't know if it's going to be successful in terms of uh, of, of public or tickets or whatever but if there is a collective uh, awareness and a collective uh, pledge maybe the I don't know. There is there are other solutions that can um, that can cover that kind of money, or that can also um, I don't know this kind this kind of 
that the, for example, what the state does when supports some uh, artistic things that are not uh, commercial or I don't know <laughs> if it's the word, but I, th I think that, uh, for example, this same this same instance of di of talking together and dialoguing and sharing the problems, it's also a way to find a solution. I think it's... And, and you think that there should be, because you said about uh, the um, government, or you think there should be government incentive for new music, like tax reduction if you are playing uh, new music, or uh, st uh, the uh, government pays for the copyrights, or something like this? That Not a bad idea. Uh, well, I think I that kind of things already yeah. exist. For example, this kind of ex tax exemption for big uh, big companies that they uh, promote cultural and artistic activities, but I don't know if that's the solution. But specific for the difference between uh, copyright uh, protected music and not copyright protected music, the, uh, there yeah. should be some some government aid or some balance uh, that state associate associated for this. I, th I think that not the government, but the state. That is different <laughs> because yeah. it's not. Yeah. It not depends of who is governing, but it depends. It's, but, in it's, yeah. But currently, it's a major problem in our country because our state is is being little and li little and little every every time. Everything is privatized. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I think that that's why I think it's important to think things in broadly and um, in connection and I'm not in isolation that this is my problem and how I, so I solve this problem and he also has another problem but if we talk together and we, if we find solutions together maybe we can find better solutions that help all of us. Um, let me, let me uh, just because we have one last question so okay. about this I think we have to clarify that the copyrights is one thing and the rental materials and selling and buying materials is another thing. The copyrights are really, really cheap. Really cheap. It's almost nothing. I received, as, as I told you, three, five Chilean pesos for a, a piece who, who was played. The other thing is the rental materials, and that is expensive. But we have two ways to, so, to get a solution and that machines, computers are the solution because you avoid the printer. You can, you can buy scores online and uh, download really, really cheap. It is the same if you, rental, if you rent materials for orchestras. On that way, you avoid the printers and you can uh, drop down the, the, the prices. Could be a solution. If you want to say something to this topic. Yeah, I think, no, I just to say, um, it's a very complex topic, and I agree with mm -hmm. Eileen. I think, I think, I think in, in this, w in what you're saying, I think, as you say, we still see the shadows of Domingo Santa Cruz, because at the end, it's a very important question. I think f for me as a, as a music historian, it's a very important question. Like, la in, in which ways, so how far, are composers willing to go for their music to be performed? It's a question that is it's a very long question in history. So when you when you read, you know, um, Beethoven selling the Hammerklavier to the editor, and the editor saying this is this piece is too difficult, and, and Beethoven writing back saying, oh, don't worry, you know, take out the last movement or just change or add another adagio if you want, doesn't matter, just sell it because I need the money. That is a very sort of late 18th century, early 19th century attitude where you, you need the money because that you need to live from that. You live from make, making music in an age where almost all music performers were amateurs and you played music in the home and that was that was the key thing. So it was music to play at home because there were you know no radio, no recordings. And then you have very complex music made for orchestras that sell tickets in the 19th century or opera and then the ticket, the money from the ticket is the one that makes composers live. Then in the 20th century, you have the composer living from the state funding uh, more than anything because of the recording, you know, collapse of everything from music recording. So n so now, what do we do in all this time? Yeah, you know, with printers and, and internet and everything, there's a new technological culture, a new market culture. And I think the question which is coming from before is, 
because the question you ask is, what do we change? And so it's not an aesthetic problem. But I do think it is an aesthetic. I do, I do think it is an aesthetic problem too. I mean, saying it's not an aesthetic problem means that it's all the rest that has to change and not composers. And, and saying it, it is also an aesthetic problem is what I, lean, I think, not, I not in that way, but maybe it's, it's, I think, the same. Like, how do we put a dialogue here and say, okay, how far are we willing to go? Which is, I know it is a discussion in certain countries and by certain school of composition too, especially in the sort of northern countries like Finland, or, you know, where they say, okay, you know, how do, how do we go into this new stage? And so I think that is an important question. I do think it is aesthetic too. I do think it is about, okay, it's not only if people, because if not, we're going back to the Santa Cruz attitude of saying, well, if they don't want to play the music or no one supports me, then, you know, that's their, that's, that's a problem from everyone except me. For for a few years, we had this new law of music mm -hmm. that Sebastian uh, Rasmussen was talking about in the film. Yeah. Uh, that has a lot to do with this, and um, maybe it has uh, a lot of influence in the in the long run. I think I think I think it is an important question how it is going to change in the twenty first century. So so I think a lot of the twentieth century was a lot of about performance, saying okay, what can we do so that the music is also perform and what can I, you know how do we add this music? Excuse me, I, I think some maybe some people do not know what the uh, law of music is, but uh, so it's the 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 media is uh, obligated to uh, play at least uh, twenty percent, is mm -hmm. twenty because they want a thirty, but. At least uh, at the end was approved 20%. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very interesting to see how um, discussed it was. No? It wasn't an easy <coughs> choice. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very interesting. I related, for example, to um, the new laws for um, rates, uh, gender rates in the government, in the pa parliament, and so. Um <coughs> and there are always some people who is maybe against feminism. They, they argue that. Uh, why should we give uh, special things mm. to women or so? Mm. And then the, the counter argument, of course, is that uh, first we have to correct mm. this difference and then maybe we can be uh, again equal. Mm. If you use this uh, reasoning to mm. contemporary music or to Chilean music, mm. uh, the law of music is justified, firstly. Mm. And secondly, um, we should do a lot more and the government should um, do a lot more and the SSAD should do a lot more because popular music, who is massive, mm. should support uh, classical music. Mm. And uh, Can I say something? Because I think that there, there are two things mixing there. One is the law for saying, okay, Chilean music in this very broad sense, 20%, and that, that's one thing. The other thing is more going old school and saying, you know, um, other music should support one type of music. Which at the end, it, it implies that there is one music that sells very well in the market. But actually, a lot of popular Chilean music doesn't sell very well in the market. I'll, I'll, you know, I think last year there were more than 3,000 uh, um, albums produced in Chile. So that's a lot per day. Yes. Most of those recordings are never heard yeah. again. They're just performed one or two times in Spotify by friends and family. And there's also that side. So, so what implies that so only one, a few of those, and that, I think yeah. that goes yeah. back to the division that Santa Cruz produced at, at the yeah. in the middle of the century. I, I can tell you uh, from the what I know from Austria, from the AKM, the the, the SSD from Austria, is that um, everyone pays uh, a similar um, fee uh, to to make a concert, for example. But it, depending on how uh, what kind of categorization this music is, and this a uh, uh, very interesting topic uh, in itself. Um, it's more or less that you become as uh, um, copyright. So classical music has the biggest factor, mm -hmm. uh, the largest. And um, popular music, I think, uh, the smallest. No, there is uh, improvisation, I think, is the, it's not even one, it's like uh, zero comma uh, five or so. <laughs> it has a lot to do with the culture of classical music. Of course, yeah. And its own historical tradition. There's, of course, a lot of discussion to this yeah. topic here also, but um, I, I agree that uh, there are a lot of um, alternative uh, popular music uh, uh, productions that... <laughs> but who, who are not... not even yeah. alternative. I think this idea of that popular music is massive and it's uh, successful is it's just an, 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 an idea and it's ideological as well. Because it's not that way. Uh, I think who are the successful are whose 
sell their music, who can make a living from it, uh, who can, I don't know, sell their records or their music are broadly played, and that applies for popular music, for classical music, for art music, for how do you want to call it, but it it not depends on the genre, it depends on other things. As Jose Manuel said, in, pop, in popular music, there are lots Lots, lots of musicians that are that really can't live of what they they do, even if they are doing a very mainstream popular music genre. Yeah. They there are lots of cases of musicians dying in poverty. <laughs> it's true, and yeah. doing popular music and doing very uh, mainstream mu popular music. Nothing avant-garde, nothing, you know. But wh why is that? It's a problem of what? It's popular music. It's, you know, it's it's another thing. It's it it it's. I think it's also an, an idea of. Uh, I think that has more to do with how uh, royalties are distributed more than how of the quality of the music or yeah. you know. It's different. I think it's. Well, that <laughs> we have a last question from Martin, I think, and then we. Close it for today. Um, one of the things that strikes me for your presentation, Jose Manuel, was the the idea of the how women were made invisible during the 60s and, um, and throughout the history of Chilean music, and and then you connected with some more contemporary more uh, composer from nowadays and and you mentioned that they in a way they leave uh, to a kind of different field to work m mostly on popular music so I wonder uh, if you can expand a little bit about that and maybe uh, if all of you can can talk about this specific topic because I think it's it's quite symptomatic that we are here around I don't know 12 15 people talking about music composition in Chile and there's just one woman and it's very interesting comparing to other conferences where we have been before and it's never that uh, marked difference you know so uh, and especially com uh, considering also the documentary that we saw before, that there are around 10, 12 composers, and then only two women appear uh, talking about, uh, and very briefly about their experiences. So what can you say about that? Uh, it's, well, as I said before, I think it's something to ask that we really need to discuss with women that define themselves as composers and how they look back on all of this. Uh, and I try to bring that more historical perspective. But I think it is an issue. I know from the interview, from the two interviews there, the how they, they happened and that it was a discussion that came also. And and and, 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 and in those two cases, it's, you know, women who are interested in composition, but they're, all, they're mostly performers. I think they are defined as performers in there. They are performers because they are both performers, of them, yeah. yeah so but specialized in the Chilean and contemporary in music. music and, and and they they have this they, they they are very conscious about this thing also of, of women performing compositions by men which is a, a phenomenon in the 20th century and and it is something i think more than to the same as as you say with the quotas and everything in the government or something it's more than something that to just criticize like strongly to the back without historical knowledge is more to look back at history and say okay how can we start changing this and and sort of um, being m being conscious of it being conscious of how very obvious it is mm -hmm. and you know and, and speaking with some of them with, with Hugo or with Carolina so uh, talking about this um, because I, I was thinking about doing this sort of more longer interviews with a lot of those cases and and the, the it's something that comes very often that going into the classroom and going to university composition and they are the only woman in you know two three generations and they are like okay what what I'm doing here and teachers saying you know maybe you do more like songs or maybe you do more like um, theater music because of and and something that happened you know and 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 it's it is I think it is a problem and and now you know 
it, now it is changing very very fast and there are these discussions about abuse in the university and mm -hmm. especially in you know music and, and there are the, all these discussions and there are I think there are, as we I think discussed before in the coffee, they, they think it might they might be very much related. So who is in power of the thing? And but I think it is a topic that really, as you say, also needs more women in the discussion. It's not something I can. You know, I would feel guilty about. That. And we have to close. Yeah. It's getting very late, and the police is going to come. So uh, we can continue the discussion because it's a very interesting topic about uh, gender. Uh, tomorrow uh, we have also a panel discussion. So thank you very much for coming today and uh, let's meet tomorrow again in the morning. Thank you. <laughs>